Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Berkeley County Board of Education meeting this Tuesday, November 15, 2022. I call the meeting to order. I declare a quorum of members are present and the media has been notified. First thing on the agenda is the swearing in of the new board members. I'll turn it over to Ms. Katie Tanner at this time. Good evening, Chair Barrow, Superintendent Jackson, board members, and all of you who have joined us this evening. At this time, we will have the oath administered to elected board members. Would Senator Larry Grooms please come forward? Would the following board members please move to the front of the dais along with any guests? Board member Matt McQuillan, board member Joe Baker, and board member Kathy Littleton. If you would, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator Grooms. Now, would Attorney John O. Williams please come forward? And the following board members, please move to the front of the dais along with any guests. Board Member Sally Wofford, Board Member Michael Ramsey, and Board Member Jimmy Henson. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Now, would Judge Deborah Littlejohn please come forward? 
And would board member Yvonne Bradley and board member Crystal Wigfall please move to the front of the dais along with any guests. If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I am duly qualified according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will, to the best of my ability, Discharge the duties thereof and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations, Lee. Thank you, Judge Littlejohn, and that concludes this portion of the agenda. The next item is the approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Chair, Everyone? I make a motion to amend the agenda as follows. Move agenda item 14, election of board offices, officers to agenda item 1D. Second. So we have an amendment to the agenda. Uh, Mr. McQuillan, and that is to move the election of board officers 14 to 1. What did you say? 1D, immediately following this motion, the approval of the agenda. 1D. Well, 1D is the approval of the minutes. Yeah, to move it to agenda item 1D. So approval of the minutes will be item 1E as okay. amended. But you have yeah. a motion and a second on the table, so you need I understand to call that. the question. Thank you for that clarification. We have a motion to move agenda item 14 to item 1D, and we have a second. Uh, Mr. McQuillan made the motion, Ms. Littleton, or Mr. Ramsey. Mr. Ramsey made the second. So all in favor of adding this to the agenda, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? The motion carries. We will now call the question. All in favor of moving the agenda item 14 to 1D, respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay? The motion carries. So the approval of the agenda, we have made the amendment and we are now the moving from 14 to 1d which is the election of board officers i'll entertain a motion for the uh for the uh board officers i, I think mr. we need chair to, i made the motion for mr the ramsey we didn't call the question on approving the agenda did we we call well, the we question amended. on the amend on the amendment we amended it he did a I did call the question. Okay, got it. I, I uh, if I'm second. wrong, please, Ms. Ms. Parliamentarian. He did the second one to approve the agenda. I thought okay. I did it properly under Robert's rules. Excellent. 
All right. Go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Ramsey. No worries. Mr. Chair, I make the motion for the following slate of officers and for these officers to assume the duties immediately following this vote. Mr. Mac McQuillan as chair, Ms. Sally Wofford as vice chair, Mr. Michael Ramsey as secretary. Second. We have a motion uh, and a second for the appointment of Mr. McQuillan as the chair, Ms. Wofford as the vice chair, and Mr. Ramsey as the secretary. Are there any other motions? Are there any other uh, nominations? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor of this slate of officers, please respond by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries. Uh, I will not, I will abstain. So the uh, the vote was 6-2. So, Mr. McQuillan, you may take yep. your seat. I I'm fine sitting here until after executive session, but I appreciate that. The first item, um, or the next item on the agenda is a motion to approve the minutes from the October 25th, 2022 board meeting. Do we have a motion to approve I those minutes? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. A motion by Mr. Ramsey, a second by Ms. Littleton. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of approving the minutes, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it by a vote of nine to zero. I will next entertain a motion to enter into executive session. Do I make the motion. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Ramsey, a second by Mr. Henson. Is there any discussion? The stated purpose of executive session are as follows. Discussion and evaluation, employment, assignment, demotion, discipline, or release of an employee as needed. Legal update regarding pending, threatened, or potential claim or of other matters covered by the attorney-client privilege or claim of other matters covered by the attorney-client privilege. There are two student attendance appeals and six expulsion appeals. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it by a vote of nine to zero. We are now in executive session. Return to regular session. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Walford, a second, or Ms. Walford, a uh, second by Mr. Henson. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? With the motion carries by a vote of nine to zero, we are now in regular session. The next item is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Please stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat. Please join me in welcoming the Berkeley Elementary School drummers, Principal Kelly Gabriel, and led by Miss Rasa Rasi. Hold on, Rasiapo. There we go.
Y'all did awesome. Thank y'all for coming. The next item on the agenda is citizen comments. Before we begin citizen comments, we have 22 citizen comments tonight, and so we're going to limit the time to one minute per speaker. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcome and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. A person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or references to students other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Again, comments will be limited to one minute per speaker. The board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or halt public comments that do not adhere to these guidelines. The first public comment is Ms. Lynette Duggins. Um, speaking on teacher supply closet support of Superintendent Jackson. Ms. Duggins, please come forward. One minute, boss. <laughs> We've got 22. I'm respecting oh. our staff tonight. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes sir. yes, sir. Representing teacher supply closet, this is my board member, Ms. Chapman, and Mr. Nelson, we would just like to say that our um, superintendent Jackson has supported Teacher Supply Closet for over five years under my administration. He was a member and treasurer, and we value him very well. Thank you. Thank One you. minute. The next speaker is. It, thank you. The next speaker is James McLeod. Please come forward to the podium. Mr. McLeod, going once, going twice, gone. Kathleen Lowe, is Kathleen Lowe here? Yes, ma'am, please come forward to the podium. Good evening, my name is Kathleen Lowe. I'm the high school physics teacher over at Hanahan High School, and I'm the Berkeley County Education Association president. And this evening, I'd like to talk to you first, congratulating all the board members of their return and those that are new. Um, 
that we really, right now, even though the election is over, we really need to move forward and prioritize what needs to be done. And what I need everyone to focus on is that we are in a teacher shortage. 140 teacher openings right now in Berkeley County. Many high schools, elementary schools, and middle schools are missing science, math, and English teachers. I think it's important that although we have many resolutions that will be occurring this evening, to show what a priority is, is to put our students first and make sure that quality teachers are available for all of them. I appreciate your time. The next speaker is Ms. Ann Condor. Congratulations to all of you, and this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. <clears throat> Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, <clears throat> you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, in which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Ms. Condor, your time has expired. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our next speaker this evening is Mr. Tory Lifridge. Good evening, Mr. Leifert. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Superintendent Jackson, Chairman Whitley. I mean, I'm sorry. Oh. I kid, I kid, I kid. <laughs> I definitely respect the chair, Chairman McQuillan, and to the rest of the board. Um, I'm standing tonight because our hope was, election does do have consequences, and our hope was we would finally have a return to sustaining a focus on curriculum and supporting our faculty and administrators. And uh, we know that, that this seems to be a quick return to 2016. And I'm, I'm pressing upon you, speaking to my representative, Mr. Baker, I do not know you personally, had a chance to sit with your wife through the election. She tells me that you're a strong person of faith. I don't pay attention to scriptures that are read that when have an opportunity are never fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Because that means nothing, that's just empty mm -hmm. words. But I challenge you, to break away from the core, be your own person, mm -hmm. and vote for what is right. CRT, if CRT does not exist, why in the world will we have a, re a resolution to ban it? That's just a slippery slope that we can stop teaching critical history like redlining, like uh, racial gerrymandering and things like that. That's history. That's not CRT. Thank you. The next speaker this evening is Ms. Christy Dixon. Good evening, Chairman Quillen, Superintendent Jackson, board members. Congratulations on all of your wins. I know they were hard fought wins and you deserve the seat that you sit in. I come here today also with a Bible story, um, a genuine one though, because I feel through the election process, a lot of things were torn down. And I think this is a time of rebuilding. I'm reminded of a story in Nehemiah where the walls around the city had been torn down. 
But the people came out and they rebuilt the walls right there where they were. And I think that's what we have to do for Berkeley County. You all are going to be leading us. And as the head goes, so does the tail. And I look forward to the good things I think you will do. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Heather Hickman. Congratulations, y'all. I just want to plead for our children. Um, when we send them to school and they eat food in the lunchroom, we serve them clean, healthy food. I want them to have clean, healthy books in their libraries. Um, we pay for the books that are purchased. We do not have access to those book lists. We do not have access to the list of the school, the books that ends up in our libraries. We need help there. Um, I know y'all have a plan to address some of what is in our schools. Some of it is adult content, and I'm just here to say we support y'all in getting that out of the schools. I am not on a witch hunt. I am not here to chase down who purchased those books, but to find out how we can get transparency and accountability. Thank y'all for what you do. The next speaker is Ms. Alana Lewis. Hi, I'm the librarian at Sangaree Middle and the secondary lead librarian in the district. And on behalf of Berkeley County librarians, I would love to welcome you to the board. BCSD is blessed with librarians that transform teaching and learning. Uh, we are, have master's degrees and K through 12 certification and have specialized training in evaluating and purchasing books in order to build a library connection collection that meets the needs of our community and state curricula. Um, there has been an abundance of misinformation and hyperbolic statements and political rhetoric about what is in our libraries, but I can assure you BCS libraries do not contain porn and CRT. We have board approved policies that we follow when selecting materials, IFBDAA, and we also have a reconsideration policy, KNBA, that allows people to challenge specific books for their own child. So I would ask that you follow the board policies that are also in place. I don't think we need an additional committee on top of that. Um, and I would remind you that in the Supreme Court case, Island Trees versus Pico, the court held that school boards cannot remove instructional materials simply because they disagree with the point of view or content. Uh, I would inv invite you to visit any of our school libraries and see what's actually happening where we transform learning. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Cindy Fisk. Hi, thank you board members, Chair McQuillan, and Superintendent Jackson for always listening to the public, every meeting. I know that all of you take in consideration um, what the public says before you make a decision. Tonight, I'm asking you to consider my question. What is your definition of critical race theory? Will there be a list of historical topics given to teachers that are considered permissible to teach in the classroom? and also align with the South Carolina State Standards. I've had many teachers reach out to me in the last day, and what you may define as critical race theory may not actually be considered as actual critical race theory. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker this evening is Mr. Paul Bowers. Hello, Paul Bowers. I live in North Charleston. I send my kids to Charleston County Public Schools, but I came out tonight because the attacks on the full teaching of history and on the acknowledgement of gay, lesbian, and transgender people are happening across our state and across our country, and you are about to participate in it tonight. The folks with Moms for Liberty, the folks in right-wing activist circles are coming for us today the same way they did in the McCarthy era. They stand in the same ignominious tradition of book banning, of seeing boogeymen around every corner. 
The same folks who so many years ago would have said secret communists are around every corner are now going to tell you there is secret critical race theory. There is secret pornography being smuggled into our schools. No matter how you define it, no matter how much you treat them in good faith, they will not stop and they will attack teachers and you will lose more teachers and you can't afford to do that. The next speaker this evening is Miss Kimberly Clark. Good evening, board. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, my name is Kimberly Clark. I am a social studies and English teacher at Hanahan Middle School here in the district. Um, and I just wanted to speak about not so much why we um, don't need to spend our energy um, effort in trying to ban critical race theory, which is something that is not being taught in our classrooms. As a social studies teacher for the past 10 years in South Carolina, I can attest that it is not part of our standards. Um, but what is running rampant within our classrooms is the unspoken messages that we send to our students of color, that we send to our students that are not Christian, and that we send to our students that are not straight by the authors that we choose to include within our English curriculums, the poems, um, nonfiction stories, as well as the stories that are presented within our social studies curriculum and within our social studies textbooks. We automatically tell um, a number of our students without actually saying it, that their experiences are not valued, that their people are not valued, and that their voice is not important. Um, and as professionals of education, when we deal with children, that is not setting them up for success within, our, within the, the real confines of their world. If they can experience real problems in our world, then our other students can learn about it. Thank you, Ms. Clark. The next speaker is Darian Jones. Jones? Darian? Oh, there he is. Good evening. I'm Darian Jones, and I serve as the senior pastor of Monk's Corner AME Church. Um, this isn't about me. It is about the children we serve. But just a short note, I graduated from both Morehouse College and Yale University. And at both institutions, critical race theory was a fundamental part of my education. And I didn't leave hating conservative voices. I left with a more informed opinion and a more informed and expressed idea of race relations and power dynamics, both in America and in the world. As a pastor of Monk's Corner AME, we have a wealth of educators and students in our congregation. And I'm here to advocate for the children and the families a part of my congregation. To understand the nuance of our church, its physical makeup, its parishioners, and its history within this community, you must have some level of engagement with critical race theory. Understanding the points like the fact that our church has been on the same property since 1886 requires an understanding of critical race theory. To understand that we are an AME church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church requires... Sir, your time has expired. I'm sorry. Thank you. The next speaker is Letitia Vaughn. Good evening, Superintendent Jackson and uh, Chair McQuillan. Thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Letitia Vaughn, and I am a member of the Pro-Truth Coalition, which has membership across the state of South Carolina. I'm here to speak about the CRT resolution that is on your board agenda. My question is similar to other questions. How are we defining critical race theory? As a previous public school educator, district leader, I understand that CRT is not part of any K-12 curriculum or approved state standards. If this is the case, then why is this part of any discussion? Instead of focusing on manufactured issues that are non-existent, we should be focusing on ensuring all children are achieving at high levels, closing the opportunity gaps between black, white, and Hispanic students, ensuring all children have access to a high quality teacher in the midst of a teacher shortage, and making sure all children have access to a curriculum that is reflective of their experiences and background. And finally, making sure the teaching force is representative of the students that they serve. Thank you.
the next, the next speaker is Ms. Sharina Haynes. Good evening. My name is Sharina Haynes. I am a resident of District 5, and I will be giving remarks on behalf of the Goose Creek NAACP, where I serve as president. Today, we celebrate historically high levels of diversity in our schools, yet structural racism and racial disparities have never been more pronounced. Yet, instead of addressing these deep-rooted issues head-on, many want to spend their time trying to discredit CRT based on fantastical misconceptions and lies. To be clear, post midterms, the NAACP will be on the offense for justice and education for all marginalized students. We will fight harmful agendas, and we will work to make sure that every student can benefit from a rigorous education that is honest about our past, adapts to our diversity, and roots out racism, whether it's structural, implicit, or interpersonal. Only then can we create the future we all deserve. I do want to take some time to thank Superintendent Jackson each of the school board members, his administration, including Dr. Tiffany Richardson, who has served as in-house counsel for the district with her expertise in educational law, Thank for leading a bold effort to address the pressing needs of our district. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Shirley Martin. Good evening. When I came tonight, there were a few things I wanted to discuss, but after listening to the litany of things that you're dealing with, all I can say is that I am very grateful that you have a passionate, knowledgeable leader at the helm of this district. Because you've got serious problems, you've got serious concerns, you've got serious communication issues, but you've also got a serious leader. Please, let's not minimize his importance. The next speaker is Ms. Tracy Hughes. Since I have a minute, I'll hurry up and get right to the point. Everything I wanted to say has already been said. I served, I'm a US Army combat veteran, and I served for 22 years in the military. And I am so disappointed in how we treat our children. We all fought, we fought for equality, for freedom, the rights of every one of us in this room, including our children. Let us not forget what that was all about. Let us not forget, and thank you for the great leader that you have in charge here, because he is an awesome man of God, and that's what we need on the top. The next speaker is, Ms. Uh, is Cleo Scott Brown. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak. I'm Cleo, I'm from the Creek, and I'm a former employee of Berkeley County Schools. Before white nationalist strategist Stephen Bannon made it a CRT, a part of a national strategy to get just regular white citizens to participate in their agenda to divert public funds to private schools, I doubt if any of us had really heard of CRT, since it wasn't anything in the schools. The problem is that since none of these discussions uses the actual definition of CRT, activists have the opportunity to sweep all sorts of things under the rug and to ignore complete and accurate history. My time can't be out on the first paragraph. <laughs> no. Thank you, ma'am. The 
The next speaker is Mr. Brandon Fish. Good evening and congratulations on uh, being elected to the Berkeley County School Board. I'm here tonight proudly representing the Charleston Jewish Federation. We are a nonprofit that functions as the hub of the Jewish community of the Low Country, which includes 12,000 Jewish residents. Part of the work, I I'm here to express our concern and opposition to book bans and bans on what is being referred to as CRT. In other counties around the country, these vaguely worded bans have had an impact on the teaching of the Holocaust and its important lessons. Learning about the Holocaust and other dark chapters in our history, including slavery, Jim Crow, and their enduring impacts on our society is crucial in ensuring that these historic mistakes are never repeated. It is also critically important that our diverse student body see themselves reflected in their coursework and are adequately prepared for the diverse workplaces and universities that they will enter as adults. Lastly, we just want to express our faith in the professionalism of our local school administrators, teachers, and school district employees and remind this board that South Carolina is facing an unprecedented teacher shortage, a problem which can only be exacerbated by curricular censorship and the furthering of the narrative that teachers are indoctrinating our students. Please reject this ban. The next speaker is Ms. Natanya Miller. Good evening. My name is Natanya Miller, and I'm also here from the Charleston Jewish Federation. I'm also here as the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor. As an organization, our federation, along with federations across South Carolina and the United States, have a goal of combating anti-Semitism and hate in all forms, and we do this through education. One of the pillars of our federation is the Remember Program for Holocaust Education and Genocide Awareness. Through this program, we bring speakers into schools, survivors, second generation, third generation, to share their family stories. Learning about the Holocaust and its lessons of unchecked anti-Semitism and racism is one of the best ways to ensure that genocides and other such atrocities never happen again. This learning is not always comfortable and can in fact be difficult for those with backgrounds connected to both victims and perpetrators. But even so, learning about these atrocities at an age-appropriate manner is critical for all of our students. Thank you. The next speaker is Marcus McDonald. My name is Marcus McDonald. I'm a substitute teacher and a youth advocate. I'm going to get right into it. I know a lot of people might invoke the name of MLK when they speak in arguments for this ban, but I'll tell you a little bit about him, and I'm going to give you a quote from him. He said in 1967, less than a year before he was assassinated, that it must be said that white people are not putting in a similar mass effort to re-educate themselves of their racial ignorance. It is an aspect of their sense of superiority that the white people of America believe that they have so little to learn. Loose and easy language about equality resonates resolutions about brotherhood and pleasantry of the ear, but for the Negro, there's a credibility that he cannot let go. He remembers that with each modest advance, white people promptly raise the argument that the Negro has come far enough. Each step forward accents their ever-present tendency for backlash. This bill is a backlash. It's a backlash to black students. It's a backlash to black educators. And we will remember Martin Luther King's word. We will remember that Thomas Monk, who this city is named after, was a slave trader who tortured and branded his enslaved Africans. And we will remember this, and I will remember all the school board who vote for this and prioritize comfortability over the lived experiences of 17,000 black and Latino students in your district. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Ms. Brittany Gary. Yeah, Brittany Gary. <coughs> Good evening. Teachers have lost a great deal over the last three years. The one thing that we gained was a superintendent who was willing to listen to teachers, willing to allow us to create, and chose to see an opportunity gap rather than simply seeing just a learning gap. 
With so much being inconsistent in our district, I'd like to ask for board members to step back from the political for just a moment and model for us as teachers the BCSD work and life skills and what it means to collaborate, communicate, and walk together through the challenges we share. I challenge you to collaborate and model the work and life skills with our superintendent, teachers, and district personnel to identify our needs and challenges and not assume that you know what those are. As teachers, we've been required to show data that we are working with our students and that we're looking for solutions together. As a board, you must hold yourselves to the same standards as you are holding us. Data that shows you're working for what's best for our students and my kids. The way you choose to collaborate and communicate with one another's board members is demonstrating to all of us how you will communicate and collaborate with us, our superintendent, our teachers, our students, and stakeholders. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, admirable, whatever is excellent, please do those things. Thank you. Our final speaker. Our final speaker this evening is Dr. Chris Hanley. Chairman McQuillan, board members, Mr. Jackson, y'all look great up there. I'm really happy to see you all there. I know you've been attacked quite a bit this evening, uh, and that's okay. I know at least the six of you on the left, I know you very well. I know, I know your character. Pastor Lifridge, I think you know me. I'm a youth minister in the area. I know these six very well. And as we communicated through the campaign, I will tell you that most of our communication sounded more like Bible study and prayer requests than it did like a, uh, a political campaign. So I assure you, these are wonderful Christian people. So, wow. You're going to really impugn the character of someone and tell them that they're not a Christian? That's, woo. All right. Well, I'll tell you. The, the fact that I know you all will be led by the Holy Spirit gives me great comfort. And I will tell you the same thing that I told... Yeah, time's up. Thank you, Excuse me. I will tell you the same thing that I told Ms. Bradley on the night of the your election time, your time when expired. I called her. I congratulated her, and then I told her... Sir. Sir. And then after I congratulated Sir, her, expired. I told her... I stand ready to assist you in any way that I can. All right, time's Please up. Time's call up. me if you need anything. Is on. Right, Miss Dr. Hanley, he is correct. He did call me. He congratulated me, and he said he would work hand in hand with me. But I need all of you to work hand in hand with us. Tonight is not a night that I am a Christian. I am so sorry. I asked Pastor Drayton, didn't realize that was him, to speak to me. Because what we're about to do in this session, ladies and gentlemen, you are being fooled by these six. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, we'll have a, unbelievable we'll, you can what be the chairman we, would do. It is so unbelievable how this is going. And we voted for these people. You did. All right. You the took next, the time. See, he wants to shut me up, but my sister knows. We run an orderly meeting here, ma'am. You we have plenty order, of time to discuss. We are decent and in order. Ann Condor talked about the full armor. Pastor Drayton, I'm going to keep that armor tonight. Yeah. I'm right. going to keep it tonight. The next agenda item is actions required from executive session. We have several of those this evening. We will first start with student attendance and expulsion appeals. <sighs> In the matter of student number one and two on attendance appeals, I move that we deny the appeals. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of denying the attendance appeals of students numbers one and two, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Uh, the ayes have it by a vote of eight to one. Do we have a motion it, um, for 
student number one in the expulsion appeals. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the um, appeal for our student number one and have him go to the alternative school. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of approving student number one's appeal and assigning that student to the alternative school, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Ayes have it by a vote of eight to one. Do we have a motion to mat and the expulsion appeal of student number two? Mr. Chair, I move that we also approve the appeal for student number two and have him go to the alternative school. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of granting the expulsion appeal of student number two and assigning the child to the alternative school, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ayes have it by a vote of eight to one. In the matter of student number three, I move that we grant the expulsion appeal and assign the child to the alternative school. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Nay. All right, let's do a roll call vote. If you voted no, raise your hand. All right, the ayes have it by a vote of 6-3. Five four, excuse me. The the next uh, motion is the ex expulsion appeal of student number four. Do we have a motion, Mr. Chair? I move that we deny the appeal um, and the student remain where he is. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of denying the appeal of student number four and allowing that child to remain at the school where he is currently attending, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. The ayes have it by a vote of eight to one. Do we have a motion in the matter of student number, is it six or five? Five. Five. Mr. Chair, I move that we deny the appeal for student number five. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it by a vote of nine to zero. In the matter of student number six, I move that we grant the appeal and allow the child to attend the alternative school. Do we have second. a second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? No. Nay. The motion carries eight, or excuse me, six to two. All right, we have some other items um, out of executive session. Ms. Littleton, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to terminate the employment of Dr. Tiffany Richardson as an in-house general counsel for Berkeley County School District. What? And retain well, services. No, we're going we, we're to maintain order in this meeting. No, we're not. And retain the services of Mr. Brandon Gaskins effective immediately as discussed in the executive session. All right, listen up. We're going to be respectful during this meeting. You may disagree with our votes, but I'd ask that you please be professional and calm. What kind of example are you setting for our kids disrupting a meeting like this? No, we're going to be responsible and we're not going to be disruptive of this meeting. All right, Ms. Littleton, can you please repeat your motion? Yeah. Let me to repeat my motion? Yes, please. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to terminate the employment of Dr. Tiffany Richardson as in-house general counsel for Berkeley County School District and retain the services of Mr. Brandon Gaskins effective immediately as discussed in executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Discussion. Yes. Uh, on what grounds are the... Uh, Mr. Are Mr. Bradley, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. I'm asking oh, the question of the now, person right. who made the motion. The person who made the motion made the motion for a reason. I'd like to know what it is. What is, what, what is the cause? I'm recognizing Ms. Bradley. You can ask that question if you'd like. What is the cause Dr. Richardson is being removed, terminated? I, I'm not going to discuss personnel matters. In in okay. The board policy needs to be revised, amended, to give reason why you're terminating someone. As Berkeley County, we're looking for teachers to come in. We're looking for other employees to come in. How in the world are you going to terminate somebody without giving a reason? Teachers want to come, but if I hear in the street that you're terminating your counsel, in-house counsel. And to bring previous counsel back to the board, back to the district. Uh, yes, 
previous council who bills us at 275, 225 per hour. Now you mean to tell me you give up a set fee for some money, Miss Ashley, you would know how much it is to pay. That makes no absolutely no sense to a common person like me. Walking in off the street, money matters. Mr. Bear? I'd like to know um, what the fee is for Mr. Gaskins. For, I'm assuming he's still with Moore Van Allen. He is, yes, sir. Is we correct? discussed that. Uh, the last time I, I had occasion to uh, discuss the fees, his fee was $375 per hour. Now, that, um, that is part-time. We're not talking about an in-house general counsel who is full-time employee at $145,000 a year. Let me, let me just show you something. Those are invoices front and back for legal fees that total $1.6 million oh, yeah. at, a, at a cost per month on average of $25,946.84 from the past legal fees. The legal fees that Dr. Richardson receives at $145 per year is $11,000. $666, a difference of $14,000 a month, ladies and gentlemen. So if we're talking about fiscal I move that accountability, we call the question. if we're talking, no, I am not finished. You're not going to stop me. We have a, we if we're have talking a, about we, fiscal we accountability, have Mr. Barrow, if we, we're talking about fiscal accountability, Mr. Barrow, we where have a is it now? A second to call These question. individuals ran on a platform of fiscal conservatism. Where is it? Mr. Barrow, we've got a motion and a second to call the question. Is there well, any? So you're, you're silencing me, of Mr. Motion. Chairman? Question. Are you silencing me? I'm just saying, Are you there's, silencing a, there's, a, there's a motion on the floor. You know, there was a the time question. when somebody was silenced and there was a lawsuit. There was a motion. Do you recall that? Mr. Chair, there's a motion, or Mr. Bear, there's a motion and a second to call the question. All in favor of calling the question, please respond by saying aye. 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 All right. Let me see. Y'all, we need to be quiet. He can't hear the ayes. So the, and there's a motion correct. and a the second. Is dead. There's a motion and a second to call. There was too much time the, in between the motion before the second. There's a motion and a second to call the it question. All motion. in favor of calling the question, please respond by saying aye. 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 All, right, all opposed? Nay. All right, so there's and you see three, what's going on. Three nays. You see the difference. All right, difference. the motion to call the question You're right. passes. You're right. We'll now call the question. All in favor of Ms. Littleton's motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Nay. 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 Right. The, vote, the motion carries six to three. Uh, <clears throat> Don't do it. Don't do it. Watch what's the next motion. The, the ne Watch the motion. Listen carefully. You I'm, all have been I make, sandbagged. I make a motion to terminate the employment of Mr. Dion Jackson, the superintendent of the Berkeley County School District, effective immediately. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? It is discussion. I'd like to know who, who made the second. Mr. Henson. Mr. Who made Henson. the second? I made the motion. Mr. Henson made the second. Oh, okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, there's discussion. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Barrow, you're Absolutely. Recognized. I'd like to know the justification and the rationale, reasoning for firing an individual who just was proficient in his first annual evaluation. <laughs> What's the reason, Mr. Chairman? You made the motion, what's the reason why, why are we terminating his employment? Mr. Barrow, I'm not going to discuss personnel matters in open okay. session. <laughs> okay, well, I, we're going to continue the discussion then because I'm not going to let it go.
Is there any, any further discussion? I believe, uh, do I have the floor, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Okay. I believe the reasoning is because of what uh, I've been told is a uh, unconstitutional, unlawful contract because Mr. Jackson's contract is a multi-year contract and it is for a supermajority, in this case six individuals that have to terminate his employment as opposed to sometimes the simple majority. That's in his contract. Some people are believing that this is unconstitutional. I want to read into the record because this came up when Mr. Jackson's original contract, the contract, was signed and executed by me. The question is, is Mr. Jackson's contract unconstitutional and unlawful? Let me read you a legal opinion from Andrea White, from White and Story, who practice only, only education law which she's done for 34 years. Pay attention. Dear Mr. Barrow, I'm writing to follow up our phone conversation on yesterday in which you ask that I provide my opinion whether the Berkeley County School District Board of Trustees may lawfully enter into a contract with a prospective superintendent where the contract contains a provision re requiring that a, quote, supermajority, end quote, of the board vote to unilaterally terminate the contract. As we discussed over the past 33 years, this was written last year, I have represented public school districts across the state of South Carolina and in that capacity have been involved in drafting superintendent contracts on many occasions. I can unequivocally say that it is common practice for a board and a superintendent to enter into a contract where the contract provides that in order to terminate the contract for no cause, which is the unilateral termination provision, a supermajority of the board must act. The practice developed to protect a board as well as a superintendent from those situations where the loss of one trustee in an election cycle. I am aware of one district where the superintendent's contract may be unilaterally terminated by a simple majority, but in my opinion, that is an anomaly. As I understand that an attorney currently working with your board has provided his opinion that a supermajority requirement violates South Carolina law, in particular South Carolina Code 59-1530, I have reviewed that statute and do not believe it impacts the ability of the board to enter into a county board of education, excuse me, a contract containing the supermajority clause. Section 59-1530 states, quote, a majority of the members of the County Board of Education shall constitute a quorum for the transaction of the business of the board, end quote. The statute merely defines a quorum and does not address the board's ability to enter into a contract requiring a supermajority for a certain action by the board. I would also note that only a simple majority of the board is required to approve a contract containing that provision. Finally, I have done research and have found no cases in South Carolina Circuit Court or Appellate Court that addresses this issue. Should a case such exist, I have been aware, I would have been made aware of it based upon the nature of my practice. Cases from other jurisdictions touching on this issue would have no precedential value in South Carolina, particularly where the case does not involve the right of a school board to enter into a contract containing a supermajority clause but the applicability of a particular zoning ordinance. I trust this information is helpful. And then also, let me just add, I got another verbal legal opinion from a well-respected attorney, David Duff, who concurs with this assessment. So I do not believe that the reason why I think this board is getting ready to terminate this superintendent, I do not think it's unconstitutional, that is the contract. And in fact, I think this is a political witch hunt on their part. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Nay. Nay. The motion carries six to three. Miss, Mr. Henson, you are now recognized. Thank you. As a new board member, Mr. Henson is a part of the six-member team Dr. Hanley just referred to. We, I was not notified of any of these resolutions or, or recommendations. It is unbelievable that on the first night of a new board that such things would come up. Unbelievable. We have another motion. Unbelievable. We have Mr. another Chairman. motion. I, I make I make a motion to wait, name wait, Anthony wait. Dixon. All right, Mr. Henson, go ahead. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to name Anthony Dixon as the new superintendent of Berkeley County School District, effective immediately, in order that Mr. Dixon be immediately successfully given this mid-year transition. I further move to authorize Dr. Dixon to immediately hire a new deputy superintendent, chief academic officer, and to further restructure and reassign his cabinet with no further board action. Second. <laughs> we have a motion to name Dr. Anthony Dixon as the new superintendent of Berkeley County School District, effective immediately, in order that Dr. Dixon be immediately successful given this mid-year transition. And they further move to authorize Dr. Dixon to immediately hire a deputy superintendent, chief academic officer, and to further restructure and redesign his cabinet with no further board action needed. Is there any discussion? Absolutely, there's discussion. Could y'all close those doors? Okay, so uh, let me get this straight. When Mr. Jackson requested additional administrative assistance, there was a outcry from members of this board and individuals in the community that said it was unnecessary, that we were going to get top heavy. And now, which we do not have a deputy superintendent, now we're going to hire one? We're going to add to it when last year it was too much? I don't understand this. So Dr. Dixon left, and he is now in Charleston County. Why, if, if, if the board, and evidently, the new members that were sworn in tonight evidently had some inkling as to what was going to occur. I wonder if there was any clandestine meetings prior to this meeting that they were privy to what was going on. Mr. Baker can ask those questions later. I don't know. But I will say this. This is a travesty. This is a travesty. If the superintendent is being terminated, for what cause? What cause? And let me just also say that this is unbelievable to me. If we're going to terminate, not me, if they're going to terminate the superintendent, why not have a superintendent search? Why, why bring somebody back that may be on their side and that just be all politically upright? And you know, I, I respect the people who made some comments tonight, but this is a sham. This is a political hit job from, and this reminds me of 2016, only worse. It's, a, it's an absolute travesty. And I'm upset and I am absolutely embarrassed to be on this board. I will tell you, I'm, at the end of the day, look, we need to respectfully disagree and set good examples oh, yes, we disagree. for our folks. But listen, listen, oh. I true, I, tr I, 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 the reason, I will give you the basis for my reason. I know Anthony Dixon. I know Anthony Dixon. I know Deion a, Jackson. Will, will do a good job. I know Deion Jackson. He was the chief, he was the head academic officer. I truly believe that he will be best for our teachers and children in this district, which is why I'm voting for him. Don't because, discuss that with him. Because of his focus on academics and my experience with him as the principal of Philip yep. Simmons High School at Kane Hoy School and various other schools. I, you can disagree with me, but I'm telling you, I truly do believe that he will be best for our children and our teachers in this district. 
Now, you, you uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you, you told us that you were going to uh, have someone explain the reasoning for Mr. Jackson's termination. I'd like to hear that. I'd like sir. to hear the rationale, the reasoning, because you, you promised We're on Mr. That we would Dixon's hear that. motion now, sir. Say again? We're on Mr. Dixon's motion now, Dr. Dixon's motion Well, you've now. already hired Brandon Gaskins. Is that correct? The, the motion passed. Okay, the motion Brandon. passed. So passed. you indicated that he would be giving us an explanation. Did you not? If he is our attorney, I would like an explanation as to why Mr. Jackson is being terminated. You will get an explanation from the attorney. Well, where is he? Yeah, I don't believe Mr. Gaskins is here this evening. Oh, okay. So there's no justification, there's no reasoning for terminating the superintendent because you said we would hear tonight the reasoning. You said that, and I'm holding you to it in public arena for you to embarrass yourself. So right. what is it? We have What's the reason? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, yeah, I oppose it vehemently. And the new members of this board, I'm ashamed of you for listening to this foolishness. Motion passes six to one. Are there any other motions associated with the executive session? I do not believe so. The next item on the agenda is temporary committee assignments if a quorum is not present. And so let me, um, let's figure this out. So the, chair, the committee on academics and innovation, Ms. Littleton, that's your committee. Who's on that committee with you? Michael. You and Michael? Yeah. Is that the only and nobody else new needs to be added? So Michael and Kathy will currently serve on that committee. The committee on finance and capital planning, Mr. Barrow and I are both here. And then the committee on human resources. Are there any members that are on the human resources committee present? I do not believe so. So the temporary committee assignment, oh, Sally is. Yeah. So I will appoint Sally as chair temporarily of the human resources committee and also have um, Jimmy Henson and Joe Baker serve on that committee with her as well. T these are just temporary committee assignments, so. All right, well, at this time, we'll now recess for committee meetings. Ms. Littleton, the Academics and Innovation Committee. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Academics and Innovation met earlier this evening and on recommendation of the committee. No, this is your actual no. committee meeting. This is your okay. committee meeting, the actual uh, committee meeting. Yes, I'm sorry. A little. Uh, calling the Committee on Academics and Innovation to order, I declare this is a quorum of committee members present. I note that the media has been given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I make the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Against nay. Motion passes. First item on the agenda is a Head Start budget expenditure report for September 2022. Head Start credit report for September 2022 and prospective new hires. What's the pleasure of the committee? I make the motion to approve Head Start expenditures report for September 2022. Head Start credit report for September 2022 and prospective new hires. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm sorry, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Against nay. Motion passes. Second item on the agenda is Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior Code, second reading. What is the pleasure of the committee? I make the motion to approve the second reading of Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior Code, as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Against nay. Motion's approved. Yeah, I'm getting to it. Sorry. Jimmy's voting on this committee, too. I'm going to have Sally and Joe just be on the next one for the meeting minutes. 
Good. The third item on the agenda is a 2022-2023 local board approved innovative courses second reading. Ms. Heather Taylor, you're recognized. Board Chair Littleton, members of the board. The South Carolina Activity Coding System requires that the board approve innovative and locally board approved courses annually. Instructional activities that are currently offered in schools but are not listed in Table 1 of the Activity Coding System must receive local board approval. A student can earn only an elective credit for a locally designed elective approved course. All courses are highlighted in yellow, need local board approval. These would be the unified PE as well as the future ready course. Thank you very much. How's the uh, committee? I make the motion to approve the proposed 2022-2023 local board approved and innovative courses as provided. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Against nay. The ayes have it. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the committee so that the Finance and Capital Planning Committee can begin. I make the motion to adjourn. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's passed. I'm calling the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning to order. I declare that with Mr. Barrow and myself, there's a quorum of committee members present. Note that the media has been given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The agenda is approved. The first agenda item is out of state travel. Ms. Smith, you are recognized. Mr. McCormick, you didn't appoint me to anything. Chairman McQuillan, board members, administration is requesting approval of out of state travel as presented. Yes, ma'am. Um, Administration is requesting approval of out-of-state travel as presented. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Out-of-state travel is approved. The second agenda item is FPB 666-2022-23, design, provide, and install metal canopies. Ms. Smith, you're recognized. Thank you. I would like to ask Marcy Abrahamson to join me for the next three items on the agenda. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman McQuinlan, members of the board. Um, tonight we present to you fixed price bid number 666-2223 for the design to, for the design provision and installation of medical metal canopies. Um, this is a bid that was conducted to secure qualified fabricators and contractors to provide turnkey metal canopies and walkway covers for facilities throughout the district. The maximum fixed price was set at $55 per square foot. The initial contract term will be for one year with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms. The recommended awardee provided pricing at $49 per square foot and as the incumbent on the district's previous contract for these structures. The awardee is East Coast TMV LLC for an estimated annual contract value of $784,000 and an estimated five-year contract value of $4 million. Moved to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Third agenda item, please. Um, this is um, an invitation for bid for train HVAC equipment. It's IFB number 667-2223. This was con bid was conducted to secure a reliable source to provide the district's standard HVAC equi equipment. The recommended and awardee is our incumbent on the district's previous contract for these this equipment. The initial term will be for one year with the option to renew for one 
will, with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms, the um, awardee is Train U.S. Incorporated for an estimated annual contract value of three hundred thousand dollars and an estimated five-year contract value of one point five million dollars. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Eyes have it. The fourth agenda item is RFP 668 2022 2023 Moving Services. Um, this request for proposal was conducted to establish a term contract for moving services to support the district's facilities department with large moving projects. Um, the initial term will be for one year with the option to renew for four additional one year terms. This contract will be used on an as needed basis with the highest ranked offer being top priority maintenance services, LLC, with an estimated annual contract value of $20,000 and an estimated five year contract value of 100,000. To approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. The ayes have it at this time. I will um, entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll move. Second. We have a motion to second to adjourn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 We are now adjourned so that the Human Resources Committee, which will be made up of Ms. Sally Walford, Mr. Joe Baker, and Ms. Yvonne Bradley, can begin. I call the Human Resources Committee to order. I declare a quorum is pre present and the media has been notified. I'll now entertain a motion to appro approve the agenda. Motion. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Baker, a second by Walford to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> The ayes have it, 3-0. Uh, the item on the agenda is the amendment of the board policy BA, first reading. Um, essentially, the, the change to the policy BA is to change the committee names. Um, since the penny passed, um, there's interest in making a capital only um, committee. So one committee will be capital and then um, finance and human resources will be together. So that's the proposed change of the amendment of board policy BA. Is that the only change to the policy? What about the one that refers to what we talked about earlier? Um, the attorney and clarifying how they can be released. So that this first reading, that's the only planned policy that- Again, Mr. McQuillan, as, as board chair, you did not send out any information to anyone other, well, I didn't receive any information. So at this point, I'm going to say no to that. I'm not going to go along with that um, amendment for board policy, even though it's a simple thing, title change. But I think we should be informed. If, if I'm on this committee, um, I should have been notified ahead of time. But this is Plus, just a temporary committee assignment. Well then, we saw each other earlier tonight, Mr. McQuillan. We've been with each other since five, six o'clock. So, We've been sitting next to each other, Mr. McQuillan, since six o'clock. You have not said anything. I to move to approve the amendment law. of board He's policy BA first reading. We're out of order. I move to approve the amendment of the board policy BA first reading. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Baker, Mr. Hanley. They provided that information to us this weekend over email. See. No, the district. To, the district did to everyone. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a motion. Where did you get there's your information, Mr. Baker? Where did you get your information? This isn't appropriate. No, it is appropriate. He just said he got it. This did the district you, did you get it on board docs? So you got the... I, I did not. Okay. So how did you get it? You were not a member. Especially until... if this change in the policy. You were not a member until you sworn the oath of office tonight. Uh, I'll be happy to How did you have access to this I information? I, I believe it came from Dion Jackson. He oh, emailed me in order to get prepared. Be, he's I'll, not present to I'll be uh, happy not to cooperate that. that. No, he has, in order to get prepared for the meeting, he emailed the superintendent and asked to send the meeting packet, and he did. Right, he did. There's nothing wrong with that. Mr. Yvonne no Bradley could have done the same thing. First reading. The change is tonight. It didn't come across from Mr. Jackson. That's what he That's just said. That's all I'm saying. 
Correct. So how we're, spe we're speaking specifically about the amendment of board policy BA first reading. That's the BA, the, the policy I read, had 12 to 13 statements. Board policy BA. Okay. Yeah. And you picked out one particular statement in reference to the penny sales tax that was just approved. So my question is, sure, I'll go along with that. However, there are other policies that I need to, would like to see amended in that group. So Mr. McQuillan, from this point on, I will also send you a statement of concern in reference to those board policies so they can be amended at the next meeting or the following meeting. Thank Since you. this one didn't come across, I had no idea what it was, which one of the 13 policies we were talking about. <coughs> That's my clarification. It'll be, we'll read it uh, in the committee. You'll read it four times, so there'll be adequate time to make adjustments. I'm going to call you, have the you question. Called for any, have you called for any discussion? She, she's yes. about to do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so I want to ask for some discussion on this. Sure. Because BA policy, BA stipulates the positioning of the board members. Uh, okay. And to this date, until tonight, there was no at large. So policy BA needs to be amended to include the at large positioning on the board. Okay. That's a good, that, that's a good constructive well, comment. Ms. Bradley, I understand your comments too. And this is first reading, so we can address those at second reading before it goes to the full board for a vote. Yeah. And the third sentence in there has nine members, and now, as we know, it's now eight, correct? No, eight it has nine. At large. Eight single-member districts, single one at large. Yeah. But it needs to be changed to where it's worded correctly. So then, as I said, the one she picked out is in reference to the penny sales tax. We'll go ahead and take care of that tonight. Mm -hmm. But... Moving forward, we need to look at all those policies and make changes, adjustments, revision as we go through. Any additional feedback? I'm not sure that I will end up as the chair of this committee, but I've written down all your comments to, to pass. I have no doubt. Probably will. <laughs> There's just really no reason to be rude. I know. It's I know. There's oh, just yes. no, right. really no reason to be rude. Right. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, 3 0. We'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Not Hearing not none, we'll, we'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. All right. The next item on the agenda after returning from the recess from committees are the reports from standing committees. First, a report from the Committee on Academ Academics and Innovation. Ms. Kathy Littleton, you are recognized. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Academics and Innovation met earlier this evening. And on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the Head Start Budget Expenditure Report for September 2022, Head Start Credit Report for September 2022, and prospective new hires. We have a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of the Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior Code. We have a motion, a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Uh, what were the uh, amendments or changes to the Student Behavior Code? Because there were several meetings that there were bantering about different changes, and I'd like to know what they are for the public's consideration. Um, they should have been in your board docs, but... Um, I've said for so the public's consideration. So basically, it... Um, it adds the fact that parents will be involved in any interaction with their child having to do with discipline. It talks about um, if there is a meeting between a counselor and um, if a, there's a meeting with a child for um, discipline reason, then a counselor will be involved with that, that it won't be done by teachers or SROs. It'll be done by the counselor itself. That's primarily the changes. I believe there's still a law on the books in South Carolina called in loco parentis. 
basically saying that the adults in the building are in the place of their parents. Not to say, not to say that parents should not be involved. They absolutely should. But there are some considerations here. Every time you speak to a child or a counselor speaks to a child, they're going to be required to call the parent. Is that what you're saying? That is not what I'm saying. That's not. Well, tell me what you're saying. That's what that's what I gleaned from it. And that's not what's written in the policy. It is if there is a formal meeting held of the child, a parent to be there if the parent wants to be there. If the parent chooses not to be there, that is their right. Absolutely, that's correct. And I'm all for parental involvement, but I'm not for it if it. Uh, if it hinges upon the administration and the school's ability to run the building effectively, every time you speak to a child, you don't have to get permission to call a parent. That's all I'm saying. But I don't think the policy says that, is what she Well, saying. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. All right, is there any further discussion on uh, Administrator Rule JIDCA? Yes. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. By a vote of eight to zero. Also, on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the proposed 2022-2023 local board approved and innovative courses as provided. We have a recommendation from a committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. The Committee on Finance and Capital Planning met earlier this evening, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the out-of-state travel as presented. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of FPB 666-2022-2023 to East Coast TMV LLC for the design provision and installation of metal canopies for an initial contract term of one year for an estimated value of $784,000 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms with a potential contract value of $4 million. We have a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 667-2022-2023 to Train US Incorporated for HVAC equipment for an initial contract term of one year for an estimated value of $300,000 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms with a potential contract value of $1,500,000. We have a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of RFP 668-2022-2023 to Top Priority Maintenance Services LLC for moving services for an initial contract term of one year for an estimated value of $20,000 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms with a potential contract value of $100,000. We have a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, um, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. That concludes my report. Next, Ms. Walford is the Committee on Human Resources. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Human Resources met earlier this evening, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the amendment of board policy BA first reading as presented. We have a recommendation from committee, so no second is required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it by a vote of eight to zero. Does that conclude your report? I'm sorry, yes, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. All right, the next agenda item is the board resolutions. And the first resolution is item 11A, which is resolution to direct finance staff to work with trustees on a property tax decrease proposal in light of the passage of the one cent sales tax for schools. Mr. Ramsey, you are recognized. Mr. Chairman, given the passage of the one cent sales tax and the revenue that it will consistently generate year to year, I move to direct finance staff to work with the chairman of finance committee to be named the Committee on Finance and Human Resources 
on a property tax decrease proposed regarding the county's significant debt of service millage, leveraged on Berkeley County citizens and the district's failure to lower millage as promised to the voters from previous bond issuances. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. We're talking about debt service millage, not general fund millage. Debt service millage? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ramsey? What's, what the motion is it for debt service millage reduction or general fund millage reduction? You should never ask a question if you don't know the answer. It's, uh, yeah, it's debt service millage leverage. That's correct. I'll read the motion again. It says, it says, given the passage of the one cent sales tax and the revenue that it will consistently generate year to year, the motion is to direct finance staff to work with the chairman of the finance committee to be named the Committee on Finance and Human Resources on a property tax decrease proposal regarding the county's significant debt service millage leverage on Berkeley County citizens and the district's failure to lower millage as promised to voters from previous bond issuances. So the motion is to direct finance staff to work with the chairman of that committee to propose um, Let's see, to work with staff to propose a property tax decrease. That's what the motion on the table is. The resolution says to work with trustees. Trustees. That includes all members of the board, does it not? I'll, I'll make a motion to amend Mr. Ramsey's motion to include board trustees. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we've got a motion to amend to include that the finance staff will, will submit the proposal to the board trustees. Um, and there's a motion to amend on the table. All in favor of the amendment, uh, please respond more. by just saying aye. Question. Just well, another let's question. Let's get through this first and I'll recognize you. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any I was opposed? part of the, dis of the discussion. I have not finished my okay. discussion. I've, I've revised it though to include trustees per your comment. Carry on. This is something that uh, I do not disagree with. In fact, I agree with it wholeheartedly. However, I believe we need to be wise and prudent in making sure that we don't reduce the debt service millage to a degree that is going to create a problem, making sure that the seven-year capital projects plan is completed. That is something that concerns me. Uh, because I know that the board's desire to to eliminate uh, a large percentage of the debt millage immediately or in the near future, I don't think that's wise fiscally because we tout ourselves as fiscally conservative. We need to make sure that the penny sales tax is going to satisfy the pay of all of those of all of those buildings that we've approved in the capital projects plan I would support an initial five mil reduction and then after the revenue starts coming in determine how much if any more revenue needs to be reduced you cannot you cannot emphasize enough and I'm going to revert back to something we did two years ago three years ago there was a there was a uh, there was a move afoot. We had to reduce the millage by three mills because of reassessment. The board at that time reduced it not three mills but twelve mills, which created a serious debt problem for this board and for the district. We went way beyond what we should have done initially. And that's a fact. We only had to do it by three mills. We did it by 12. So all I'm saying is, let's learn from our past history and make sure that we do it fiscally, conservatively, and responsibly to make sure that we can build those buildings and then take a look at how much tax reduction we can do for our citizens. Yeah, I, I believe that when I read it, that this is a process, not a determination right now and that we're going to uh, trust in our finance group to be able to guide us through that. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor of Mr. Ramsey's motion, please respond by, Mr. Ramsey's motion as amended, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries by a vote of eight to zero. The next agenda item is a resolution 
to disallow the teaching of critical race theory in any form in the Berkeley County School District. I make a motion that teaching of critical race theory in any form in the Berkeley County School District be permanently disallowed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There's some discussion here because, as I recall, last year, year before, uh, the then Superintendent of Education, Molly Spearman, made a comment that uh, the State Department of Education does not teach uh, any of their standards in the CRT, critical race theory. Uh, and it, I don't really know if there's a need for this resolution for two reasons. Number one is really not defined for me because I don't know exactly what it entails, what it allows to be taught, what it does not allow to be taught. I do not want a policy that constricts teachers and, and makes them vulnerable to be criticized, chastened, and disciplined for something that they may or may not know what they're supposed to be teaching. I think that's commonsensical. Does anybody want here for a teacher to be disciplined for teaching something that they were not told they should not teach? I don't. So if we pass this, I need to know, well, it looks like it's gonna be passed. But the question is, what actually can be and cannot be taught. Because that's if I'm in a classroom, and I was in a classroom for 11 years, I needed to know what I can and can't do. If you put something out there, no critical race theory, and it's up to some bureaucrat or board member or a, a principal to say you're violating it, it has to be in writing as to what they're violating. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? It's just, it's just common sense. Thank you, Mr. Barron. I agree. I have a definition here of critical race theory, and I think what we can do is, based on this board's motion, assuming it passes, to create a policy that sort of spells this out so that teachers do have clear direction. The definition I have is critical race theory is a perspective on modern life, a worldview that believes all events and ideas around us in politics, education, entertainment, and the media, the workplace, and beyond must be explained in terms of racial identities. Under critical race theory, every political idea, election, textbook, movie, news report, work environment, and local concern cannot be judged according to effectiveness, quality, or accuracy, but according to whether minority individuals and issues are afforded more influence in everyday life. Even George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and the U.S. Constitution itself are subject to being canceled out of American culture, such as being removed from the names of public schools for failing to live up to the standards set under the critical race theory. That said, I do agree with you, sir, that we, if this motion passes, we ought to set forth a policy that provides guidelines for our teachers as to what the critical race theory is and what can and cannot be taught. I'd like to have one other question answered by any board member, any member of the cabinet. Uh, do we know of any, any school or any teacher or anybody in this district that is teaching critical race theory at this time? Got an email last week about it. I get an Say email. again? I got an email last week about it. I get, I get emails from parents occasionally that will say this was taught to my ch child who approved this uh, okay so again my question is what is acceptable and what is not acceptable parents views vary because of the mores and the training and the upbringing of individuals and their families they have different thought processes about what is and what is not acceptable which is so, why I'm suggesting if this pol if this motion passes that we provide specific guidance and a policy on this issue. That's not good enough for me. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have and, to vote against this one. And I'd like to um, just state that I do believe that history should be taught. Okay, and I I, I heard I heard what you said. Um, I don't want to stop our educators. However, I don't want children. To me, CRT is a, a law that, it's taught in law schools. It's a theory that's way over their heads and we're breaking it down not only as a board, but we're breaking it down for children trying, and, and there is a division. Um, I believe it's important that children know their history and the history of the children sitting next to them. But I think that we don't need to add the emotional component to it, or the guilt component to it, or it's, I absolutely agree. It is emotional. It's emotional for everybody in this room. 
So I, I'm just saying, I'm not against teaching history. Yeah, I, I, so. I want to specify that too. We had the gentleman that spoke about the Holocaust and teaching history and another gentleman that spoke about Jim Crow laws and the history of South. I do believe that that history should be taught. I'm not, we're not opposed to that. We think that that should be taught, but there are certain forms of the critical race theory that are being taught in our classes that is inappropriate and, it, and isn't age appropriate for our children, which is why we want it set forth. Because it, I, all right, we're going to call the meeting back to order. I get emails. I'm telling you, I get emails regularly from parents about this. The, the current policy we have is not effective. Right. Ma'am, you, ma'am, that's not appropriate. Ma'am, if you if you did this, you. Can. All right, let's move to call the question. Is there any further discussion from board members? Mr. McCullen, I, I, re, I respectfully uh, understand your position that we need some more clarity. Uh, but at the present time, I'm not satisfied that we're going to get that clarity to the degree that I think will protect our employees. So I'm going to vote no. Okay. All right, I'll now call the question. All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. Motion passes by a vote of six to two. <clears throat> All right. The next agenda item is the resolution to establish a committee to evaluate appropriate guidelines for the evaluation of materials of inappropriate sexual pornographic content in the Berkeley County School District. So moved. You said appoint a committee? Okay. You had called this question. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Sorry, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Okay, so a committee is, is fine. Made up it of doesn't say who it's going to be comprised of. It so, needs to be comprised of administrators, teachers, librarians, parents, and perhaps even a member of the, of the board. Well, what I, yeah, what I envision is that board members send suggested either committee makeup or particular individuals that they would like to serve on that committee. I will consider those and make appointments for board approval and a vote at the next meeting or, or a following meeting. This, but, is, but but, this motion is simply, simply but, to create a committee. But even now, we need to invite those members of those groups that I've specified as being eligible to be on the committee. Because what concerns me is that we're going to uh, we're going to say yes, we need a committee, <clears throat> but who's going to be on the committee? Come on, it needs to be defined. A committee made up of administrators, teachers, librarians, parents, board members. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm, what I'm saying is I welcome board feedback on that. And if you give want to give me a potential makeup of the committee, and you want and you want to nominate particular individuals for the committee. We'll consider that and vote on that at, a, at another meeting. No. Why not change the resolution to include those titles now? So when I vote on it, I know it will be comprised of school librarians, reading teachers, administrators, board members. I'll have that those titles ready, those titles in my mind, so I'll come up with names to go along Ms. with. Ms. Bradley, you can Please make an amendment to that. Titles, you, can, you can make an amendment to the resolution to include I'd like that. I'd to amend the resolution to include school librarians, reading teachers, administrators, all grade levels, as well as um, parents. board members, parents. parents. I, I think just in the interest of time, rather than rattling off stuff, we ought to give this some thought, discuss it as a board at the next meeting. Once we get the, com the committee passed, then we can vote on the framework so and the individuals. She made an amendment. She made a, a motion for an okay. amendment. I second it. All right, there's a motion and a second to amend the policy. Is, um, is there any discussion of the amendment? I'm a no vote on this. I think we just need more time to consider it before we determine rather than just throwing out names of people. Yeah. Mr. So Barrett, you do have you have a consider. problem with the, what you said, but just doing a little bit later where we can get the right people in, involved? Uh, no more that's people. what I'm asking for, but this is putting this in place without those particular individuals involved. So you before 
this is finalized, you want to have a committee established already? No, I don't want individuals. He wants to go ahead to and it. vote on the committee makeup tonight. The I'm makeup, it makes more including sense parents, teachers, librarians, principals, and maybe even a board member or two. I don't see a problem with that. So well, thank you, Mr. Hanson, because I don't need it. Of these I, I think it's just. I think it's just obvious common sense that when you say you're going to have a committee, who in the world is going to comprise membership in the committee? No, I agree that we have a vote on that. I just say I, I think we ought to think about it and vote on it at another meeting. But if I'm not mistaken, this resolution came from whom? Somebody thought enough about it to put it on here as it is. So that says there's a thought process already in motion. All we're asking is that you include titles to include those individuals. So when you go back, you will have those titles and you'll get a better grouping of individuals on the committee. That's all. Do you not think it would be wise to think about it more? Because you've listed reading coaches, teachers, board members, and parents. Is there anyone else that you may have left off that it may, additional time may be helpful? That's all I'm saying. Well, then you would include additional members as needed or as necessary. That's all. I may put a parent there who, after two sessions, can't attend anymore. So therefore, I go to my list and I pull up one that's next, put them on the list in the committee group. I just think time passes. Are you, you going to call the question on yep. this particular? So the question on the table is whether we amend it to include the specific titles of who, Ms. Bradley? Yeah, uh, your, th that's the part I need to know is the Your school piece. librarians. Okay. Your reading teachers, coaches, you said. Your parents. Your administrators, your community member one or two. Oh, go, one go a little bit slower. Hold on. Principals, parents. Who else did you say? You got librarian, reading teachers and coaches, principals, parents. Board member. Board members. Member. Maybe two. Okay. Mr. Henson might like to read, and Mr. Ramsey may have time to read. Mr. Bacon may be a reader. You know, Ms. Littleton may be a reader. Anybody else? I think that'll do. Mental health counselors. Teacher forum, that would be great too. Teacher forum person. Okay. That's not one you said before. That's why I'm saying I think it makes sense for us to think about this. So you got librarians, reading teacher coaches, principals, parents, board members, and teacher forum. Mental health. Mental health. But if you get one from each group, one from each category, you got a cross-section of people with a cross-section of ideas. Any other categories of committee members? That, that. I can agree with that list of people. I think that's. We talk about um, learning loss. So maybe the mental health, as she said, would be great in that process. So, yep, mental health, teacher forum, board members, parents, principals, reading teacher coaches, and a librarian. I still think it makes sense for us to maybe think about this a little bit more, make sure we're not leaving anybody off, but because um, this would be an important committee. When you so all in favor of adding the, of the amendment that is proposed by Ms. Bradley, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay? For the vote? All right, let me see the hands on that one. So the motion to amend passes. So the motion currently on the table is the creation of the committee with Ms. Bradley's amendment for librarian, reading teacher coaches, principals, parents, board members, teacher forum, and mental health professionals. All in favor of the amended motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Motion passes by a vote of eight to zero. All right. Bear with me one second. The next agenda item is the superintendent's report, and while we are very excited to hear from Mr. Dixon, he will be doing his report at the next meeting. For board chair updates, the board um, runs on a committee structure under policy BA, and it's my pleasure to act as chair, as my first act as chairman to appoint the following committee persons. Ms. Kathy Littleton will remain as chair of the Academics and Innovation Committee. Joining Kathy on this committee will be Mr. Barrow and myself. Dr. Jimmy Henson will chair the Finance and Capital Planning Committee, and once policy BA is amended, will be the Capital Planning Committee. 
Joining Dr. Henson on this committee will be Ms. Yvonne Bradley and Mr. Joe Baker. Mr. Ramsey will chair the Human Resources Committee, and once Policy BA is amended, will serve as the Finance and Human Resources Chairman. Joining Mr. Ramsey will be Dr. Crystal Wigfall and Ms. Sally Wofford. May I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. We're all new. Yes, ma'am. Why would you put all new people on finance? Just a question, I, I, I have a thought, but let me hear what your pattern, your thinking was. So finance is actually moving to human resources. So that committee will be Mr. Ramsey, Ms. Walford, and Ms. Wigfall. Capital planning, which, yeah, Dr. Wigfall, capital planning will be Dr. Henson, Ms. Bradley, and Ms. So I wrote down Baker. finance, so it's not finance, it's, it's capital well, it's, planning. It, it's currently finance and capital planning, but the policy amendment we made tonight to BA, if that passes third reading, will be changed to just the capital planning committee. And again, my comment, my question is, Mr. Henson, Mr. Baker, and I are all three new. Yes, Why not put someone who has some experience in finance on the committee? Just a question. So that, that, committee, that committee going forward will be capital planning, not finance. Okay. And so, lem so let me explain that. What? Okay, go ahead. He's a, he's a general contractor. He's worked in maintenance before. He's a construction engineer. You've been on the school board before and overseen schools getting built. Long reasons. I think all of y'all. Long reasons. I think all of y'all have experience, which is, well, you asked the question. I gave you my okay. answer. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. And then the next uh, announcement I'll make is that new board orientation, which is required for all new board members, is scheduled for February 16th um, in Hilton Head. And that is an important workshop to attend. So each board member ought to um, calendar that February 16th, 2023, and we'll get you some more information on that. The final agenda item for tonight is a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Walford, a second by Ms. Littleton to adjourn. Any discussion? Discussion. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I get this information on legislative advocacy if we're not going to talk about it? Is anyone, no one going? From, you're talking about from the school board association? I'm not sure. I can't read that small writing. That's, yeah, that's okay. in our board packet. I do not, let me see, let me find it. I think that was just a, let's see. Mm. No, it's um, this thing here. I got too much paper up here. I'm not even sure what it's going to be. I think it's just an announce. Uh, Across the Marriott. Okay. That's right. That's another um, event from the South Carolina School Board Association. That's the Delegate Assembly, um, which is on Thursday, December 1st. Yeah, and we've got a, we've got a meeting. You're welcome to attend. Yeah, I got it right here. Y'all are welcome to attend that, too, if you'd like. That's a good point, though. Thank you, Ms. Bradley. Is there any further discussion? All right, I'll now entertain the motion to adjourn. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.